Hello, Mission Church family. I'm Pastor Kyle. I want to say Happy New Year. We're so glad we made it to 2022. We're so glad that you're with us. It's going to be an amazing service online. Pastor Woody's going to come in just a moment and share with us a great message that's really going to lead in uh, with our big theme this year about being grounded and rooted in the Word of God. I'm so excited for you to hear it. So excited that you're with us. God bless you and thank you for watching.
Everybody, uh, thanks so much for joining us today. My name is Woody, and I'm excited to be able to share uh, from God's Word today. Uh, so we're going to just jump right into things. I'm going to read from Psalm 1, uh, if you want to follow along with me. It says, Oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or stand around with sinners, or join in with mockers. But they delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. They are like trees planted along the river bank, bearing fruit each season. Their leaves never wither, and they prosper in all they do. But not the wicked. They are like worthless chaff scattered by the wind. They will be condemned at the time of judgment. Sinners will have no place among the godly. For the Lord watches over the path of the godly but the path of the wicked leads to destruction. Uh, this first chapter in the book of Psalms that we read uh, is so helpful for us uh, because uh, one thing that we want to do as a church this year is we want to commit to being students of Scripture. Uh, and that's that's what the title of this message actually is. We're going to be students of Scripture. Uh, so that's our goal as a church for this year, we want to know, be in, and understand the Bible. Why? Why is the Bible important? Well, I want to go to the words of Jesus himself. In John 5.39, Jesus says, You search the scriptures because you think they give you eternal life, but the scriptures point to me. The reality is that this book is not uh, inherently holy because it's been passed down to us. It is holy because it testifies about the one who is holy. It, it reveals Jesus to us. It speaks about God himself. So we want to be students of scripture because when we interact with the scripture, we see and we get to know Jesus Christ, who is life our Lord and the King over everything. In the scriptures, we meet Jesus. So as we search and study, as we're students of scripture, we understand God, we are transformed to be like him as we follow the wisdom revealed in scripture. So Jesus has a really high view of scripture. He values it and says that as we read the scriptures, we'll encounter God. So what does Psalm 1 have to say about us? Let's break it down for a few minutes. In verse 1, it says, Oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or stand around with sinners or join in with mockers. God wants us to know there's a right way and a wrong way to live. God wants us to understand the right way uh, is marked by living under God's direction. 
living under God's direction specifically that's revealed in Scripture. The one who has joy doesn't follow the way of the wicked, but verse 2 says they delight in the law of the Lord. They love God's word. They love to hear what God has to say to them, what God wants to teach them and tell them and show them. The one who experiences joy, uh, or other translations say, the one who's blessed is the one who delights in the law of the Lord. That word delight is important for us. It means that we shouldn't come to God out of reluctance or, or out of forced obedience, but it should be something that brings us joy. It should be something that we're excited to do because like Jesus said, we know that when we come to scripture, when we come to God, we are encountering life. We are encountering hope because we're experiencing Jesus in the scriptures. The way of the Lord, the way of Jesus as revealed in scripture brings life. So we delight in the law of the Lord, and we meditate on it day and night. Meditating on it day and night. Can I talk about that word too, meditating? Uh, it's a bit of a unique word for us, right? Because in the world we live in today, we really think of probably ideas like yoga or Eastern religions. Uh, but really when the Bible talks about meditating or meditation, it's a almost the exact opposite. Instead of emptying our mind or getting rid of everything we're thinking about, we're filling our mind. So we're filling our mind with the words of God day and night. And even more than that, meditating on it day and night is, is a bit of a hard thing for us because we kind of live in this scrolling, bite-sized, 10 seconds at a time world, right? Uh, we don't think about things for too long until we move on to the next thing. But we're challenged here that when we're thinking about Scripture, we want to think about it constantly. Right? Think about this. If we want to be students of Scripture, what does it mean to be a student? I remember in college uh, when my wife Paige was in nursing school. Uh, God bless her. The the probably the most difficult few years I've ever seen anyone go through. Nursing school is tough because there are so many exams. There's so much you need to know and understand to be able to take care of people once you're a nurse. So I remember Paige all the time it felt like was studying. If she wasn't in class, then she was at a clinical practicing what she learned. And if she wasn't there, then she was at home reading her textbook to gain knowledge and think about those things. And if she wasn't doing that, then she had flashcards that she was reviewing or she was practicing things at home, uh, practicing on me, right? But all this to say, as she was preparing, as she was a student, she was always chewing on, thinking about, ruminating on those ideas as a nursing student. For us, day and night, that means we are always chewing on, thinking about, coming back to the ideas that we see in Scripture. It means that we're always kind of coming back to and contemplating what God has to say for us. That's what it means to be a student of Scripture, to meditate on it day and night. We're called to stay focused on the teachings of Scripture. When we do that, we won't get distracted and go off of the way that God wants us to. So how does Scripture form us? If we know it's important, we know we should think about it a lot. How does it form us and change and transform us? Look at verse 3. The one who delights in the law of the Lord and meditates on it day and night is like a tree planted along the river banks. Bearing fruit in each season, their leaves never wither and they prosper in all that they do. Three things I think that we really see in this verse. One, students of scripture can stand firm through trials. Like a tree with deep roots that go far into the ground uh, and can withstand any kind of storm that might come by. When we are rooted in scripture, we can stand strong through any storm or any struggle or trial that comes our way. 
And this is important because standing firm through trials blesses us. It encourages us, it deepens our faith and helps us to remember that God is with us in every circumstance. But also, this tree bears fruit. This tree bears fruit in the right season. And notice here, it's not bearing fruit constantly, uh, but in the right season, it bears fruit. Meaning that what God's doing, uh, there will be evidence of it that people will see, that will bless other people. So when you are rooted in scripture, other people will be the beneficiaries of it. Like we take an apple off of a tree and, and eat it for ourselves. Others see and take in the fruit of what God is doing through scripture in our life, and they are blessed by it meaning our life is in service to others and to God's kingdom. And at the end of verse three, I love this. It says they prosper in all that they do. I don't know about you, but I want to prosper in all that I do. And here, again, the Bible kind of gets at this idea differently than we think about it. When we think of prospering, we think of nice cars or expensive houses, uh, but The Bible's idea of prospering or prosperity isn't just a lot of money and perfect health. It's bigger than that. The Bible's idea of prosperity is that in every way you are growing to be more like Jesus. That in everything we're doing, we're glorifying God. To prosper for us as Christians doesn't mean that everything looks nice on the outside. It means that inwardly our heart is being transformed. So in every season, we'll prosper because in every season, God will be working in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. In verse 4, the way of wickedness. The way of wickedness here is marked by not seeking God simply. It's as if God is is coming to us and saying, hey, take me at my word. Listen to me and what I have to say to you and know me and trust me and don't look to the ways of humans who make mistakes and fail for your life. Look to me instead for your life. Look to God for your life and trust him. You see, this verse isn't, it's not a point of shame convicting you if you don't read your Bible for three hours every day, Uh, but rather it's God calling you to wisdom, God calling us to wisdom by seeking him and his way through scripture. And last verse six, the Lord watches over the path of the godly, but the path of the wicked leads to destruction. God is watching over us himself as we seek him. Uh, That's encouragement as we start this year, that that God directs our steps, that we know we're in good hands, in the hands of Jesus, we are safe. As Christians, we reside in the grace and the mercy of God. We're like a tree planted along the riverbanks who can stand firm through trials, who bears fruit in the appropriate season, and prospers, growing to be like Jesus and glorifying God in everything that we do. Uh, I don't know about you, but I think that's good news for our year. And so as we step into this new year, be encouraged. Uh, God has spoken to us and revealed himself through scripture. And as we engage with it, we come to know Jesus Christ himself, uh, the one who reveals God perfectly, who takes away sin, who ushers in a new kingdom uh, filled with hope and peace and joy and uh, that is marked ultimately by love. And as we seek God through the scripture, we are changed by that love. So let's step into this year knowing that. Let's be students of scripture so that we can know God. Thank you so much for being with us. I wanna pray as we head out of here. God, we thank you that you have revealed yourself to us. You're not a far off distant God, but you have chosen to speak to us. And because of that, we can know you and trust you. God, help us to not go 
as the psalm says, into the way of the wicked or to, uh, to waste our life seeking things that will fade away, but instead to seek you. And by seeking you, seek the abundant life, as Jesus said. Uh, so God, help us to be people who seek your way and live in that by being students of Scripture this year. Uh, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, church, uh, I want you to know we're serious about being students of Scripture. And in fact, this year, we're encouraging and challenging our whole church to read the entire Bible with us in 2022. Uh, so uh, stay tuned. Uh, check out our social media. Check the links where you're watching. We want to provide you with the resources to do that. We thank you for joining us and remember you're loved. Hey, we are so glad again that you've joined us for this online presentation. And we want to encourage you. This is going to be a year of getting into God's word. We want to challenge all of our church to be grounded. We're doing a Bible reading plan together. We're going to encourage you along the way. We're going to do it together and maybe you've never read through the Bible before or you're a seasoned pro, but we want to do this together in a way that's really going to be a blessing. Take us deeper into God's word and really deeper into relationship with him. So wherever you're watching from, you can click the link and download that Bible reading plan and get started. Uh, we are so excited about that. You can also check out our social media. We'll have links there as well to that. But we want to encourage you to read the Bible through this year with us. It's going to be a powerful time. Now, maybe you've been watching and God's working in your heart and you're ready to take a next step. Maybe you're ready to get baptized. You're ready to learn more about Mission Church and how you can get involved here. We want to challenge you to go uh, click that link that says next steps. We would love to share with you more about how you can grow with us, grow in your relationship with Jesus. We want you to know that we're here to support you and encourage you. Uh, as the Lord's leading and guiding in your life. So please don't be a stranger. Reach out to us. Let us know that you're watching. Connect with us because we care about you and we want to have that connection there with you. So fill out a connect card. Let us know uh, that you're watching and how we can be praying for you. That is our privilege uh, as uh, partnering with you in ministry. So thank you again for watching. We hope you have an amazing week. God bless you and remember you are loved.